And while tensions flare up in Israel, Saudi Arabia and Iran are talking peace. Do you know where they're doing this talking? In China. The thaw between Saudi Arabia and Iran was a landmark event. It was made official in Beijing and now China seems to be dictating the next steps. Iranian and Saudi officials are back in the Chinese capital. And this time, Beijing is hosting the foreign ministers of both the countries. Again, this is the first, the highest level meeting between Iran and Saudi Arabia in more than seven years. An agreement has been signed. They will reopen their embassies and consulates. They will resume flights, facilitate visas and send delegations from the government and the private sector. Saudi Arabia and Iran issued a joint statement and this is what it said. The two sides emphasize the importance of following up on the implementation of the Beijing Agreement and its activation in a way that expands mutual trust and the fields of cooperation and helps create security, stability and prosperity in the region. For China, this was yet another opportunity to blow its trumpet and take a victory lap. As a good friend and partner of the Middle East countries, China will continue to respect their autonomy as a force supporting reconciliation, peace and harmony in the Middle East. China will work with Middle Eastern countries to implement global security, development and civilization initiatives to promote security, stability, development, prosperity, tolerance and harmony in the Middle East. A good friend. That is what China likes to call itself. Beijing seems to be dictating the terms of this truce. But what's in it for China? Economic benefits and political heft. China has two priorities in the region, energy and economic ties. Let's talk about energy first. And this is pretty straightforward. China is among the biggest importers of energy in the world. In 2019, about 67% of China's energy came from outside. The crude oil came from imports. Saudi Arabia and Iran are the leading exporters. If they're friends, China can easily ensure energy security for itself. Its second priority is economic ties. In 2021, China and Iran signed a major pact, a 25-year cooperation agreement. By some estimates, this deal was worth $400 billion, but the plan was a non-starter. For two reasons. A, the American sanctions against Iran and B, the volatile situation in the region. Saudi Arabia and Iran were arch rivals. So China did not have a lot of room to operate. But now they're burying the hatchet and China can pursue more deals. It can expand the Belt and Road Initiative in West Asia. After all, less conflict is always good for business. China would have learned this by now in Pakistan. In West Asia, here's the next challenge it faces. Not fighting is one thing. Working together is quite another. Can China get Saudi Arabia and Iran to work together? They've been arch enemies for decades. They have religious differences. Iran is a Shia majority country. Saudi Arabia has more Sunnis. They're also involved in a power struggle. They've been fighting proxy wars in Syria, in Yemen and Bahrain. There has been deep mistrust and open hostility. Can China undo decades of bad blood? Also, where does it leave the United States? The writing is on the wall for Biden and his team. America's influence is shrinking. China is becoming a force to reckon with. So will the U.S. give space to China? Or will it compete? As of today, they can't seem to decide. There are two camps in Washington. One says the U.S. should rethink its approach and reclaim its space. The other says this is the perfect opportunity for the U.S. to walk away, to leave behind West Asia and its never-ending conflicts. Whichever side prevails, one thing is certain, America is no longer the dominant power in West Asia. It will have to learn how to live with the dragon.